Hello, how are you? I hope you're all having a beautiful start to your day. Happy Friday, happy Venus Day. And I thought today I would go on early and go on live for today's story time for the kids. So if your children are around and or you can even watch the replay and have them listen later. But if they're around and they're ready for story time, we're gonna continue our journey through the elements with the book, Earth, Fire, Water, and Air by Mary Hoffman. It's been a fun journey. We've gone through earth, fire, and water, so today, we're going to read chapter four on the element of air. Bring it up nice and close. It's such a beautiful picture. We've got birds and we've got the elemental signs or the air signs. We have Libra. Gemini and Aquarius. So Gemini is the first one. It looks like a two. And then the middle one is Libra. And then the one that looks like waves is Aquarius. Those are the three air signs. And you have Aquarius here, the water bearer pouring out the waters of knowledge and compassion and love. We have Gemini, the twins. And we have the scales down here, Libra. And Libras are the only zodiac sign to be an inanimate object, meaning not a person or an animal. How interesting is that? And so we begin the tale of air. Taming the sky. The Greeks must have spent a lot of time looking up at the sky. They told many stories of heroes who tried to conquer the air. One of them was a young man called Bellerophon. The goddess Athena helped him catch a wonderful flying horse named Pegasus. You see Pegasus, the horse with wings. Bellerophon did great deeds with the help of the winged horse, but in the end, he grew too ambitious and to fly and tried to fly up to the god's home on Mount Olympus. Zeus decided to teach him a lesson. He sent a gadfly to sting Pegasus. Ouch. So that the horse shied and threw Bellerophon to the earth. Pegasus reached Olympus and lived there ever after. Icarus was another young man who tried to fly. With his father, with his father Daedalus, he was imprisoned on the island of Crete. Daedalus made them both wings of feathers and wax so that they could escape by air. Daedalus warned his son not to fly too close to the sun. But once Icarus felt the air under his wings, he forgot. The hot sun melted the wax. His wings fell apart and Icarus, and Icarus plunged to his death in the sea. 
And see the sign, you can see Icarus there with his wings, but wax like a candle, it melts when it gets hot. So when he flew too close to the sun, he was doomed. Iris was the messenger of the gods, a rainbow was her stairway in the air from Olympus to heaven, or Olympus to earth. And you can see there's Iris riding down from Olympus to earth on her rainbow. She is the goddess of creativity. Just one moment, please. Thank you for your patience. The home of the gods. The rainbow played a part in the Norse mythology too. The Nordic peoples believed there was a rainbow bridge between Middle Earth where people lived and Asgard, the home of the gods. Across it might come Thor, the mighty thunder god, who made storms by whirling his hammer, or perhaps Odin, the chief god, known as the Allfather. The rainbow bridge from Earth to Asgard. And you can see Asgard right there, I'll turn it because there's a glare. You can see Asgard in the clouds and then the rainbow bridge to earth. Odin was a great sky god. He rode an eight-legged horse called Sleipner and had two pet ravens whose names meant thought and memory. He flew through the air carrying messages to and from the Allfather. Odin built a great palace in Asgard called Valhalla. The Valkyries did his bidding there they were power, powerful warrior women who flew through the skies above battlefields, collecting dead heroes whom they brought back to Valhalla to make a strong army to defend Odin against his enemies. I like to call Valkyries warrior angels and they wield fiery swords. Thunderbirds and star people. In North America, the people of the lakes and plains looked up at the magnificent golden eagles and other birds that whirled through the air and thought they must be winged spirits. The Algonquins believed that the beating of birds' wings caused the winds. The tribes of the Northwest believed in winged gods called thunderbirds. They thought that lightning was the flash of a thunderbird's eye. Could you imagine? Giant, magnificent eagles soaring through the air and believing that they made the wind. Many Native North Americans believed in a star country where beautiful beings lived. High above the earth, sometimes a star maiden would spy a handsome brave and come down to earth in disguise 
she would take him back up to her own country. Or sometimes it was the beauty of a mortal woman that caught the eye of one of the star youths. But the story always ended the same way. The star people could marry mortals and have children with them. All was well, as long as the humans were content to live up in the star country with their loved ones. But eventually, the humans would get homesick and want to revisit their own people. Even then, all could be well as long as they told no one about their life with the star people. Alas, the humans were always tempted into telling, and then they could never go back. You can see the star people living in their starry land. I bet a few of you are star people. I'll keep your secret. Winged creatures. Everyone can imagine how wonderful it must be to have wings and be able to fly. But for the creatures that do, life is hard. They spend most of their time searching for food. A little bird must eat several times its own body weight every day to stay alive. Big birds like hawks and owls have to catch fast moving little creatures to eat. You can see all the birds. They're so pretty. Must be nice to fly. There are thousands of different kinds of birds. From the hedge sparrow to the giant condor. And there are millions of different kinds of insects. Many of them can fly too. Butterflies, dragonflies, damselflies, and ladybugs all live a very short life compared with people, and they spend most of it on the wing. Within days, sometimes within hours, men, many of them must eat, mate, and leave eggs to grow into more winged creatures like themselves. We're so lucky to have such long lives. But aren't butterflies and dragonflies so beautiful? I'm really partial to bees and honeybees as well. And I like fireflies. Are there any flying bugs that you like? Some of them are kind of silly. Like Katie did, they bump around a lot. Angels and devils. Angels and devils. Perhaps it is because people can fly only in their minds that we have invented so many creatures with wings. The angels and archangels of Christianity can be powerful and frightening like stern Michael with his flaming sword, standing guard at the gate of Eden to stop Adam and Eve from getting back in. Less frightening are the chubby little cherubs that painters of 500 years ago put into their pictures of Jesus and his mother Smaller than cherubs are tiny creatures' mother. Oh, never mind. Smaller than cherubs are the tiny creatures with butterfly wings. 
who are the fairies of the fairy story. Do you like fairies? I love fairies. Let's see the beautiful angel. That must be Michael with his flaming sword. Very strong and stern. And then the little one with the little wings is a little cherub or cherubim. Facing. And I wish they had a picture of a fairy on here, but that's okay. Now for the devil. The devil was an angel once too. Lucifer, the light bringer. There are many imaginary winged creatures that are wicked or do not have our highest good in mind. Like vampires, like Count Dracula and demons like Ravana who stole Sita from Rama in the Hindu story of the Ramayana. Ravana had 10 heads and 20 arms, but Rama managed to track him down and kill him with the help of another air spirit, the gray bird Jatayu. I love the story of Rama and Sita. Rama and Sita get to live happily ever after. It's okay. But wow, Ravana would be most scary. Ten heads and 20 arms. That would be scary. Red sky at night. The one aspect of the elements that every person is still in touch with is the weather. For some, the weather is a vital question. Will there be rain to make the crops grow? Or will there be fair weather for safe fishing? For others, it is just a matter of carrying an umbrella or hoping for sunshine on the beach. But we all look up at the sky and sense from the air what the weather will be. Meteorologists use very sophisticated instruments and calculations for predicting the weather. But since they often get it wrong, we may prefer traditional customs of forecasting the weather from colors in the sky, or very importantly, the behavior of animals. Animals will always tell you what's going on with the weather if you watch. There are many folks saying, there are many folk sayings about the weather. A number of them are based on the look of the sky. Some actually agree with scientific explanations about cloud formations. The sayings were all based on observations handed down over generations long before there was any science of meteorology. So let's see what some of these sayings are. A rainbow in the morning is a sailor's warning. A rainbow at night is a sailor's delight. Do you know why that could be? Oh, where there's a rainbow, there's rain. And if a fisherman is wanting to fish and sees a rainbow in the morning, that means there's rain and there could be very choppy waters, which can make it very difficult for him to fish and may make some fish a little scarce. 
least closer to the surface. Let's look at some of the others. Evening red and morning gray help the traveler on his way. Evening gray and morning red bring down rain upon his hat. Red sky at night, a shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, a shepherd's warning. When clouds appear like rocks and towers, the earth's refreshed by frequent showers. If woolly fleeces spread the heavenly way, no rain be sure disturbs the summer's day. Mackerel scales and mares tails make lofty ships carry low sails. When the wind is in the north, the skillful fisher goes not forth. When the wind is in the east, it is good for neither man nor beast. When the wind is in the south, it blows your bait into a fish's mouth. When the wind is in the west, then the weather is at its best. Those are some interesting sayings, huh? I like them. I like things that rhyme. Ooh, hurricanes and tornadoes. The air around us can become as terrifying as any other of the four elements if we live in countries where there are hurricanes and typhoons. These are violent tropical storms with winds that travel up to 220 miles per an hour or 360 uh, kilometers per an hour. What begins as a small thunderstorm over a warm ocean builds up into a spinning circle, sucking up warm air. By the time it reaches land, it is an outer circle of devastating winds with a calm eye at the center. Tornadoes or twisters move even faster than hurricanes. They can cause terrible destruction in minutes, hurling trees, roofs, and even people up into the air and carrying them long distances before flinging them down again. The tornado starts in a storm when the warm air is sucked up into a column of swirling wind, a long funnel of twisting air hangs down from the thundercloud. And when it touches the earth, the powerful vacuum sucks up everything in its path. And see the swirling of the air. And there's a house and a person. And I think that's an animal. Bring it closer so you can see. Winds can be very powerful and very treacherous. <sighs> but all is well that ends well, right? A breath of fresh air. Air is the most easily polluted element of all. The air in a small closed room can quickly fill up with smoke or aerosol fumes. Out in the open, 
in the vastness of the sky, we find it hard to believe that the air cannot somehow cleanse itself, but it cannot. And one result is now a hole that appears over the Antarctic every spring in the Earth's ozone layer. The ozone layer protects us from the harmful rays of the sun that can cause skin cancer. So it's very important to stop that hole from getting any bigger. Just as we respect the other elements, we have to respect the air around us. We need to try to drive our cars less. Try not to use aerosols with CFCs. And you can ask your mom about that or dad or parental figure. To recycle as much trash as possible instead of burning it. To make smoking tobacco a very seldom thing. And to campaign to stop the rainforests from being cut down. For they are an important source of the oxygen we all breathe. Every little bit helps when we can regain a closer and more harmonious relationship with the elements. We can remember how vital earth, fire, water, and air are to human life. We can acknowledge what powerful influences they have been on people in the past and what great art they are and have inspired, and with every small step to help one of the four elements, a little of the magic they have lost is returned to them. One day, if we learn, if we learn to treat them as friends and not enemies, earth, fire, water, and air, may regain the beauty and the power they had when the world began. So that concludes our story and our journey with earth, fire, water, and air. Thank you so much for participating in this story time with me. I want to let you know that even though we've finished this story, we're going to continue our Friday story times together. And we're going to move on to a new book. This is called Changing Woman and Her Sisters. This book is a collection of stories. And so every week, we will read one story from the book. These are stories of goddesses from around the world, from all peoples and all nations and all walks of life. So it will be an exciting book to journey into. Changing Woman and Her Sisters, retold by Catherine Hyman Tijana, and illustrated by Trina Sharp Hyman. I look forward to journeying with you next week into a new book where we can take a walk around the world together and visit so many different forms of what we call the Divine Feminine. Beautiful kind, brave, intelligent women who are empowering and who've brought strength to countless people for thousands upon thousands of years. So I'm sending you all so much love and so much light. I really enjoy our story times together. I hope you had fun. And I'll see you all again.
really soon. Sending infinite love and infinite blessings. Have a super fun weekend. And bye-bye for now.